Thank you for your interest in conducting an admissions flight with ATP, the most respected name in pilot certification. This online training module is designed to provide a basic understanding of the components and control functions of an airplane and will give you an idea of what to expect during your admissions flight. ATP's professional flight instructors help more pilots achieve their pilot certification and career goals than any other flight school in the nation. As an ATP student, you will gain access to more aircraft, locations, and job placements than any flight school, academy, or aviation university can offer. With the highest ratio of airline placements to students of any flight school, ATP is your airline career solution from zero time to airline pilot in just two years. Proven by thousands of graduates now flying for regional and major airlines. For over 30 years, ATP has specialized in professional airline-oriented flight training. We are well known for providing structured and disciplined training similar to that of the airlines and the military meaning you can count on receiving training that ensures the highest levels of safety and proficiency in the industry. Learning to fly isn't as difficult as you may think. The professionals at ATP make earning your pilot certificates and starting your career as a professional pilot a rewarding, seamless adventure. Your admissions flight is the first step towards reaching your goals. It will provide you with the opportunity to experience the joys of flying from behind the controls and see the level of professional flight training at ATP firsthand. When you arrive at the training center for your admissions flight, your flight instructor will greet you and provide you with a tour of the facilities and an overview of the planned flight. This briefing will take about a half an hour and give you the opportunity to become acquainted with your instructor, the training center, and the aircraft. For admissions flights, ATP uses two types of aircraft, the Cessna 172 and the Piper Archer. Both of these larger four-passenger airplanes have the same basic components and capabilities and are renowned for their safety and reliability as training platforms. Compared to smaller two-passenger aircraft, you'll find that training in these larger four-seat airplanes is more stable and comfortable. When it's time to go flying, you and your instructor will conduct a pre-flight inspection of the airplane. This pre-flight inspection is how the pilot checks the airplane's condition prior to flight and verifies the proper fuel and fluid levels are on board before departing. This is also a chance for you to become familiar with some of the major components of the airplane. As you walk around the airplane, your instructor will provide an overview of its primary components. The empennage on an airplane consists of the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. These two surfaces act like feathers on an arrow to steady the plane and maintain a straight path through the air. On this particular airplane, the blue paint almost perfectly delineates the empennage. The fuselage houses the cabin and cockpit that contains the seats for the pilots and other occupants of the airplane. There's also room for cargo behind the rear seat. The other main components all attach to the fuselage. The power plant includes both the engine and propeller. The primary function of the engine is to provide power to the propeller. Much like a car's engine provides power to turn the wheels, most four-passenger airplane engines create 160 to 200 horsepower. The landing gear on most training airplanes is fixed gear tricycle type landing gear, which means that there are two main wheels located on either side of the fuselage and one nose wheel under the nose of the airplane. A fixed gear is always extended. The function of the landing gear is to absorb the landing loads and support the airplane on the ground. The wings of an airplane are contoured in a way that creates lift when airflow is around them. Wings are designed differently depending on the airplane's use. Cessna 172s are a high wing airplane because the wing is located on top of the fuselage, while Piper Archer are a low wing airplane. The propeller, which is mounted on the front of the engine, transforms the engine's rotational force into a forward-acting force called thrust. The propeller pulls the airplane through the air fast enough for the wings to produce lift. The number of blades on a propeller can vary, though most general aviation training airplanes use a two-bladed propeller. The elevator is attached to the back of the horizontal stabilizer. During flight, a pilot can control the airplane's altitude by pushing and pulling the control yoke, which is attached to the elevator by a series of control cables. Pulling back on the yoke causes the elevator and nose of the airplane to move up, resulting in a climb to a higher altitude. Pushing forward on the yoke causes the elevator and nose of the airplane to move down, resulting in a descent to a lower altitude. 
Flight control surfaces called ailerons are attached to the back of each wing. They extend to about the midpoint of the wing outward to the wing tip. They're connected to the control yoke in the cockpit through a series of control cables and mechanical linkages. Turning the control yoke to the right causes the ailerons to reposition on the wing, resulting in a right-hand turn. Turning the control yoke to the left causes the ailerons to reposition on the wing, resulting in a left-hand turn. The rudder is attached to the back of the vertical stabilizer and can be used to move the nose of the airplane left or right, similar to a rudder on a ship. The rudder is controlled by the pilot through the use of two rudder pedals on the floor of the cockpit. Pushing on the right rudder pedal brings the nose of the airplane to the right. Pushing on the left rudder pedal brings the nose of the airplane to the left. While on the ground, depressing the tops of the rudder pedals activates the brakes. It is good technique to always land with your heels on the floor to prevent accidental brake application upon landing. When you board the airplane, your instructor will provide a briefing, similar to the briefings you hear each time you board an airline flight. He or she will also provide an overview of the primary cockpit controls and instrumentation. There are six primary flight instruments on a conventional airplane instrument panel. The instruments provide the pilot with essential flight information, including airspeed, pitch and bank attitude, altitude, climb rate, direction, and navigation information. The six primary instruments are often referred to as the six-pack because their orientation on the instrument panel resembles the footprint of a six-pack of soda cans. Piper Archers and some Cessna 172s feature a dual-screen electronic flight display to present flight, engine, and navigation instruments digitally. Using two LCD screens mounted side-by-side, side, this modern glass cockpit instrumentation puts critical performance and navigation information directly in the pilot's field of view and helps streamline instrument scanning, enhancing situational awareness. The screen on the left is referred to as the primary flight display, or the PFD, and the screen on the right is called the multifunction display, or MFD. The PFD primarily displays the flight information found in the conventional panel six-pack, while the MFD shows engine performance and navigation information. Whether equipped with a conventional panel or a glass cockpit, a pilot will periodically scan these instruments to ensure that all necessary flight parameters are met for each phase of flight. The airspeed indicator measures the airplane speed through the air by detecting the difference in pressure between the air surrounding the airplane and the air compressed by the airplane as it moves through the air. The faster an airplane moves through the air, the greater compression of air molecules in front of the airplane, resulting in a higher indication on the airspeed indicator. The attitude indicator shows the airplane's pitch and bank angle relative to the ground. The blue portion of the attitude indicator represents the sky and the brown or black portion represents the ground. As the airplane turns, climbs, and descends, the attitude indicator reflects the changes by showing the airplane symbol in the center of the attitude indicator in the corresponding turn, climb, or descent. The altimeter displays the airplane's altitude in feet above sea level when properly adjusted. Conventional altimeters feature three pointers to indicate altitude. The longest pointer displays hundreds of feet, the middle size indicator displays thousands of feet, and the shortest pointer with the opposing arrow shows tens of thousands of feet. On the Piper Archer, the altitude is shown numerically in the vertical tape to the right of the attitude indicator. The vertical tape on the left is the airspeed indicator. All of ATP's aircraft incorporate GPS units that assist pilots with navigation, fuel planning, and other flight information functions. Using a GPS, a pilot can view a graphic image of a map which shows the airplane's position relative to the programmed route, airspace, and defined landmarks on the ground. A pilot can scroll through pages of information within the GPS database to view navigation, airport, and communication information. The throttle controls the engine's power output. It's similar to a gas pedal on a car, except an airplane throttle control is not spring-loaded. It will remain where the pilot sets it, allowing for a constant engine setting. Pushing the throttle forward increases the engine's power output. Pulling the throttle control back decreases the engine's power output. As you taxi to the runway, your instructor will explain what's happening in between talking to air traffic control and taxiing the airplane. Your job at this point is to relax and enjoy yourself. You'll always remember the first time you take off behind the controls. Before you take off, your instructor will pull off the taxiway into a safe area and conduct what's called a run-up which is a way to check the engine and other systems prior to departure. 
You will notice your instructor referring to a checklist during various phases of the flight. A pilot uses a checklist as an additional safety measure to verify that the work a pilot must accomplish during each part of the flight is done in a timely manner. Once the run-up and checklists are complete, you'll take to the sky for the first time behind the controls. Once you're airborne, you'll enjoy being able to see familiar landmarks and geography from a new perspective. Throughout the flight, your instructor will explain what's happening and give you a chance to operate controls. Flying the airplane isn't as difficult as you may think. An airplane is designed to fly. It wants to fly. The pilot is responsible for configuring the plane to what it wants to do naturally. Once you're airborne, the pilot controls the airplane's direction and altitude and manages its systems for optimal performance. The basic control function you will accomplish during your admissions flights are turns, climbs, and descents. A pilot accomplishes a turn through coordinated use of the ailerons and rudder. Remember from earlier, the control surfaces outside the airplane are connected to the cockpit controls on the inside. To turn right, turn the control yoke toward the right in a similar manner to turning a steering wheel in a car. As you turn the control yoke, simultaneously apply pressure with your right foot on the right rudder pedal. The amount of rudder pressure depends on how steep the turn is and how fast it is entered. A left turn is accomplished in the same exact way as a right turn. Move the control yoke to the left while simultaneously pressing on the left rudder pedal. Causing the airplane to climb or descend also involves using the control yoke. The yoke and stick move forward and aft in addition to left and right turning movements. To cause the airplane to descend, gently push forward on the yoke and the airplane will respond by descending. Just like going downhill in a car, the airplane will speed up as it descends. During the descent, your instructor may request that you reduce power by pulling back on the throttle control to avoid increasing the speed by too much. To climb in an airplane, pull back on the yoke and the airplane will begin climbing. Just like a car climbing up a hill, an airplane will begin to slow down as the climb begins. In a car, you can keep your speed consistent as you climb a hill by pushing harder on the accelerator pedal. In an airplane, you can compensate for the tendency to slow down by pushing forward on the throttle control. All of ATP's training airplanes have fully functioning dual controls. Your instructor will provide guidance and help you apply just the right amount of control and throttle inputs. An airplane is inherently stable and designed to fly. Most pilots are amazed at how easy it is to conduct the basic maneuvers in an airplane. Don't worry about getting everything perfect or understanding everything that is happening during your admissions flight. Your instructor is there to help and make sure your first flight is a thrill you'll always remember. With your first flight lesson complete, you are already on your way to an exciting and rewarding career as a professional pilot, and no other school is better positioned to help you achieve your career goals than ATP. Your flight training investment is substantial, and deciding on the flight school for you is a big decision. Choose a school you can trust. ATP's financial strength is demonstrated by a capital investment in a fleet of owned aircraft and in banking relationships that gain you access to more affordable student loans. Our standardized fleet of aircraft is flown by some of the most talented instructors in the industry and is maintained by a national network of dedicated maintenance personnel. An on-site inventory of engines, propellers, avionics, and other components means that no ATP airplane ever waits for a part, keeping your training on track and on time. At ATP, you'll experience unmatched aircraft, instructor, checkride availability, and coordination from ATP's Flight Operations Department, who monitors all flights for safety and training efficiency. ATP sets the industry standard for airline pilot training, with the training resources and airline connections you need for your fast track to the airlines, all at a fixed cost and in the shortest time frame. ATP is your airline career solution, from zero time to airline pilot in just two years, proven by thousands of graduates now flying for regional and major airlines.